Hey YouTubers, Grimmy Dragon here, and it's once again review time. Um, so since 2008, Mattel has been bringing us plenty of figures from their Masters of the Universe Classics line. And as of last year, they actually finished up every vintage character from the original Masters of the Universe line. So, what would be next? Well, this year, Mattel has actually gone and uh, made two lines. Uh, the first one we covered last month uh, in the Collector's Choice line with Lord Maskier. May have been early this month or late last month. But uh, now we're going to look at the other. Um, Motu line that um, Maddie has released, and that would be the Classics 2.0, aka Club Grayskull, with their first figure. One I will dub to be Filmation He-Man. So we are going to start off with the packaging, just because Mattel decided to change it up for this particular line. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a different box, like it's an actual box instead of um, a blister card, with an image of Castle Grayskull on the front, you know, jawbridge and all, got the door, just says He-Man and the Masters on the Universe in the back, and this is pretty much the slipcover. And instead of a full-on uh, shipper box, you just get the slipcover. Hiding the actual box within, which has the window box. Um, there is some actual artwork in the background, which is nice. And yeah, the figure's gone, but, uh, you know, it's still a nice little box. You got the like the bubble inside where you can put the figure back in if you want and all in all looks pretty good on the back uh, you got that image of He-Man little blurb about how the line came to be and yeah that's pretty much it for the packaging well except for one little thing let's just get a comparison with the old packaging uh, courtesy of the She-Ra figure that I keep on card. And yeah, you can see the box is actually a bit bigger. A little bit bulkier, but um, each side has its own unique differences. And really, it's just a matter of preference which one you like better. But anyway, it's time we got to the figure within. And that figure is quite the nice looking one. And you got a very cartoon accurate He-Man here. Uses basically the standard buck. But uh, has some differences in the armor, the loincloth, the boots, and of course the head. Starting with that head, yeah, it is very cartoon accurate. I mean, he definitely has the do, which for some reason Mattel made a selling point. And they advertise it on their website. Uh, I don't know why, but yeah, he does have the do from the cartoon series. Very flat, simple, has some sculpted line work in there. So it does look like hair. But it's a lot more simplified than what we've seen with uh, He-Man figures before. The armor is the same. It's the simple straps with the cross. You know, no red bits on the top. Uh, it doesn't look like the uh, centerpiece is a separate piece on this one wasn't really a centerpiece on any of the He-Man figures, but it looked that way. Oops. 
and of course you another big difference is the sheath nice feature you can see the bracers are a little simple the belt and loincloth are a little simple seems like the loincloth is a little shorter for some reason I don't know why that was necessary but yeah and yeah the boots are simpler too but simple is still good because it really does look like He-Man from the show. Can't argue with that. Now, articulation, he's pretty good. He's got the uh, standard He-Man joints. You know, ball jointed head, pin and socket shoulders, bicep swivel, 90 degree knee, wrist swivel, but he does also have those New Adventure He-Man hands, which have the up and down movement on this one, and the forward backward on this one. He has the ab crunch, waist, universal hips, thigh swivel, Real tight 90 degree knees, boot cuts, forward, forward back on the raw, on the ankle, and really nice rockers. So yeah, you can get him into a very dynamic pose if you want him. So yeah, that's pretty cool. One last little tidbit about He-Man's articulation is that he can actually be posed pulling the sword from his teeth. Um, you can't actually take it out while it's in his hand, but you can actually pose him like he's in a position putting it in or taking it out of the sheath, which is pretty cool. And it's all possible due to that hand joint. Now for accessories, he does have the power sword, same one that came with Flog, um, except it's just a gray plastic this time. So it's still nice, it's um, fairly cartoon accurate, although I would have liked a little bit sil of silver on the blade, but I can't complain too much. The other accessory he comes with is this nice little pedestal, which you can do a lot with. And you could put the light and dark halves of the power sword on there. You could put the Sword of Power and the Shira Sword of Protection on there, and that works pretty well. Get the orb behind them, or you can get the orb behind the uh, Light and Dark halves if you want. It really creates an interesting piece. And you don't even have to use He-Man swords with it. It'll work with other blades too. Like say the Soul Swords of Fervor. Now that looks pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, this is a nice accessory. It's something that I'm going to have a lot of fun with. Well, I guess we should get some comparisons in as well. So, we're actually going to start with what I've been using as my Filmation He-Man um, before this figure came out, and that's the Toys R Us 2-Pack He-Man, the one that came with Superman. Because it had the real bright colors, I, 
and it used the uh, same, well, it used similar kind of bracelets or bracers or whatever. And since I'm using the uh, flog sword, that actually works out pretty well. But you can see the difference in the blades too. I think if I can get them in there. Just zoom in. Like these are the same blades, but as you can tell, the one that came with flog as a bonus accessory is a lot nicer looking. And I guess this should get into the fact that this He-Man has a little bit of trouble holding on to his sword. Like, you can get him into a pose where it's a good grip, but it does get to tend to wobble a little bit here and there. That's something a hair dryer could probably um, cure for you, but it's worth noting. But, um, yeah. This also does a good comparison between the different styles and the heads. Where you got the classic head and the uh, more cartoon head. And just for one more comparison, I'll just bring in the action figure version with the action figure head. As you can see there is a significant difference in their styles. And we'll just hop in the sword over here. And you can see that this He-Man has a bit of a thicker sword. That's the normal style. But uh, yeah, I do like the thinner style sword that Filmation He-Man has. And in case you were wondering, yeah... The Filmation head looks fine on the standard Classics He-Man body. And also very nice on the TRU 2-pack version of He-Man. So, you can put the cartoon head on the normal body and it'll look fine. Not sure exactly why you'd want to do that, but you can the options there go to town. <laughs> the real big question is how well does He-Man go with your current run of classics figures? And the answer is very well. A lot of the classics figures like Orko, the Sorceress, Lizard Man actually do have a filmation influence on them, so they go pretty well with uh, this new He-Man variant. And now for a quick shot of the twins together, and um, well, I'm certain some people would like a Filmation She-Ra. I really don't think we need one. Like, this is the bubble power She-Ra with the uh, Filmation head that came with the first release, and I think this is perfect, right? It's definitely the uh, right style Shiva for this particular mold. Or actually for this set because it looks great with Filmation He-Man. He looks great on Battle Cat. I mean, I know I'm going to hear some people saying that there should be a version with the eyes. But, come on, that's such a small nitpick. And, you know what, Battle Cat's a really good figure in his own right. So, yeah, I'm glad he works with just about every He-Man available, including now, this one. He-Man is a really nice figure. One of the finest He-Man variants we've gotten to date. But, the truth is, that's what he is. A He-Man variant. Uh, the... Club Grayskull looks like it's going to be all Filmation variants of figures that we've gotten previously. Some 
have needed them more to bring out that filmation style, which I appreciate, and I'm glad that we're getting these figures. That said, if you can get this guy at a good price, I would say go for it. Honestly, you might be better off waiting for a re-release. Um, you know, Mattel does release these figures again every now and then. And I'm sure they have some back stock that they haven't quite uh, released for this one. Um, don't pay too much for them. But if you do not have a He-Man figure yet, this is a great one to get. If you do have um, one or two other versions of He-Man available, this is still a good figure, but it's going to be easier for you to pass on them. I just got to say it like it is. Still, I am very much looking forward to the rest of this line, especially Skeletor. Um, the others are looking pretty good, although He-Man, for some reason, is the only good guy of the Club Grayskull line <laughs> so far. So, here's hoping it lasts for a year or two and we get some heroes that year. Ram Man, Man in Arms, maybe a good Teela that we can actually get without a Talon Fighter. You know, it would be helpful. Anyway. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm actually going to be releasing some scripts for upcoming figures that I'm reviewing on my Bloggers channel, which is grimmiesreviews.blogspot.com. So feel free to check that out. I should have a written review for this guy, who is going to be in the next video review, up very shortly. So check that out, and check me out next week on this channel when we actually do a video for him. But until then, take care, everybody, and goodbye out there, whatever you are. <laughs>